If you own a Tesla Model 3 like me and you don't have a home charger, I've got two products to show you in this video that really might help you out. When I first picked up my car, I had the Tesla mobile connector included, but as of around a year ago, Tesla has stopped including this in certain regions around the world and is now a £180 additional extra. At 6 meters in length, I've never been able to use this charger at my home as my garden is over 18 meters in length. So today, I'm looking at two options which could help. The first is a designed for EV extension cable from a company called Tough Leads. The second I'll be looking at is an alternative to the Tesla mobile connector. This is the Max Green 7.5 meter EV home charger. First, let's take a look at the Tough Leads extension cable. When I first got in my car, I was strongly recommended against using a regular home extension lead. Quite simply, they are pretty dangerous to use. You might be lucky enough if you have a good quality one, but for me, it's not worth the risk, especially in an old British house. So I purchased my lead from a company called Tough Leads. These cables are essentially much thicker, safer cables to use for electric vehicles. I went for the EV Granny Charger 13 amp weatherproof extension lead. I then changed the length to 10 meters to cover the length my Tesla Granny Charger didn't cover and then added the inline RCD protection. Super important if you want extra protection against electrical issues when charging your Tesla. In the box, you can see it comes with a waterproof extension lead and a three pin socket, which can accommodate the thicker three amp plugs. This single socket can also be locked with a padlock to protect against theft. The RCD block you see is a life-saving device which is designed to reduce the risk of electric shocks and electrical failures. Next, a company called Max Green sent this over for me to test for the channel and I went for the Pika Series mobile charger. What I like about this is it's longer than the Tesla mobile charger and it also has a 10 to 13 amp switch directly on the unit itself and this will work with all EVs that have Type 2 connectors. According to Max Green, this has a smart chip system that can detect overheating, current overflow, power surges, and low voltage issues. Just like the Tesla mobile connector, it comes in a black bag, but this one also includes wall mounting brackets as well. So let's test them. So my first test is gonna be with the Tough Leads extension cable because I already have the Tesla home charger. So let's get this plugged into this little plug here and then see if it works with the car. So this is the Tough Leads extension. I'm gonna plug it in here, but you do have to do a little test before this works. All looks fine to me. Now, even with this huge cable, you can see that it doesn't even reach the end of my garden. So I've got to hope the Tesla lead can reach all the way to the car. I've got the green lights on the Tesla, so we should be good to go. of truth. That does not sound good. It says charge port latch not engaged. Fully insert charge cable or check for obstruction. That's weird. Okay, after a couple of tries, I think we're now charging. Okay, so I'm in the car and what was really weird there was the actual Tesla charging cable. It's the first time I've used it. Just wasn't locking into the car itself. It didn't feel like it was fitting in nice and smoothly. So I don't know if it's a problem with the setup or the actual Tesla charger. It's in now and it's working, but it took me four goes to get it in. And normally it goes in perfectly every time. Uh, so just something to keep an eye on there. I might have to take that back to Tesla. It could be a problem with the charger, but good news, we are charging. We're charging at only two kilowatts. Uh, it's uh, charging at 10 amps, 241 volts. And it says uh, we're 84% at the moment. And to get it to 90%, it's gonna take three hours and 25 minutes. So an extremely slow way to charge, but it's working. 
So the maximum um, being offered is 10 amps. I can take it lower, but I can't actually take it higher than 10 amps on this charge. Okay, so first test complete. Let's see if we get a better or smoother charge with the Max Green charger. Okay, so even though the Max Green charger is 7.5 meters long, which is pretty long for a granny charger, it's not gonna be long enough to cover uh, my front garden. So I'm gonna have to plug this into the Tough Leads extension cable to charge, but let's test it out anyway. Of course, that is gonna slow down the charge speeds, but let's test it out. Okay, we're green on there. And as you can see here on this charger, you actually get the option of 10 amps or 13 amps. So I can change it there to 13 amps. I'll take it back down to 10 amps. As we're already on an extension lead, I'm gonna leave this at 10 amps. There we go, first time went in a lot smoother. So I do think I have a problem with my Tesla charger and it's charging straight away. So let's check out the stats in the car. Okay, so we're in the car and it's charging lovely at 10 amps. What I'm gonna quickly do is change it to 13 amps and just see if it works with this kind of extension lead. So let's try that. Oh, okay, so we're back in the car. We've changed that to 13 amps and we can actually see we're charging really well at 13 amps. It's doing three kilowatts an hour, uh, which means instead of over three hours worth of charging, it says we're gonna be taken from 90% to, uh, sorry, 84% to 90% in two hours now. So that's much, much better. So it works really well. And I do think I have a problem with my included Tesla charger because that charger went in super smoothly like every other charge that I, that I do. It's the first time I've used that because I didn't have the extension lead, uh, the, the Tesla charger, I mean, and that is not connecting into my car correctly. So I think I'm gonna have to get that replaced. Um, obviously I've had the car two years now, so whether or not Tesla will replace that, I'll let you know. Okay, so after the tests, which one am I gonna keep in my boot? Well, actually, I think I might sell my Tesla charger for a couple of reasons. Number one, the actual charging plug doesn't seem to fit in that well in the Tesla. I might try and send it back for a replacement first. But secondly, the Max Green Charger is working really, really well. I like that you can change it from 10 amps to 13 amps directly from the device itself. Obviously you can do that within a Tesla, but some cars, some electric cars, if you're watching this with a different EV, some cars you may not be able to change that. So that's super handy. Thirdly, for me, the, the only reason why I haven't used the Tesla Charger before is when we have been at an Airbnb or staying at friends or relatives, the actual charging cable hasn't been long enough to get from the plug to the car. For whatever reason, I haven't been able to get the car close enough. So having a longer granny charger in the same amount of space in the boot of the car just makes more sense for me. Oh, and by the way, this is not a sponsored review, but just to be clear, Max Green did post me this for testing for the channel. I didn't accept any money, and I told them if the charger was rubbish, I was gonna tell all the viewers about it, but it turns out it is pretty good. So if you do want one, I'll put a link in the description below. They have sent me a code as well, so if you are in the market for a granny charger or an extension cable, you can get 5% off with that coupon code as well. So I'll put that in the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.